Hi, my name is Deborah R. Richardson of Deborah R. Richardson LLC, and I work with you to help you clean up your vendor data, clean up your vendor processes so that you pay the right vendor. Now, this week's vendor master file tip of the week is embezzled $610,000 on his way out. Don't make the same mistakes. Or I could have named it. This is what happens when you pass an employee over for a CFO position, but then make them acting CFO until the new one arrives. And I kind of talked about this uh, back in September of 2022 with this Fender Master File tip of, uh, tip of the week. New trend during the great resignation is the opposite of quiet quitting, and that's embezzling funds on your way out. So let's uh, talk about what the Department of Justice's press release uh, said. And so they do issue press releases um, for those that they, uh, cases that they prosecute for internal or uh, occupational fraud. And so a former controller received 44 months for embezzling $610,000 um, from November 2018 to January 2019. Now that's a three month period. Uh, he was able to transfer that money to a dormant account that uh, the uh, their employer or his employer uh, used and then eventually transferred it to the funds to his e-trade account uh, where he paid off his car and did some other things as well. Now this started, I talked about before because he was passed over for the CFO position and ironically he was only caught uh, after the new CFO joined, uh, though they didn't say exactly how, but it was three weeks before he was set to resign. Now, all of this means that they didn't have controls in place to prevent or detect internal or occupational fraud. So that dormant account should have been closed. Someone should have been doing a daily bank reconciliation on that dormant account uh, and they would have detected it. And then there should have been an additional approval required to make those transfers. He shouldn't have been able to, uh, been able to make those transfers on his own. Now, the Association of um, Certified Fraud Examiners puts out a reports to the nation uh, every month. And this is my page, and I'm going to go ahead and I uh, went one too far, but I just revealed everything. But this is one of my pages from my uh, training called Mitigating Segregation of Duties, or SOD. And one of the things that the uh, ACFE, the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, uh, see every year, and they recognize or report that the biggest issues with internal or occupational fraud is the lack of uh, internal controls, right? So, and, and if it's not the lack of internal controls, it's the overriding of those existing controls. So it's weaknesses in your internal controls really lead to in, uh, internal or occupational fraud. Now, again, this is one of my slides that I go in depth into and to train in this training session that I do on the fourth Wednesday of every month. It's live or you can watch it on demand. Um, but this is the separation or segregation of duties, mitigating conflicts in the P2P process to prevent fraud. So I am going to put a link um, to this training in the description. And I'm also going to put a link to the Department of Justice uh, press release where I got this story from. So you can check them both out if you're interested. All right. So if you like more information on how to improve your vendor process, you can always go to my site at DeborahRRichardson.com for free tools and resources to avoid fraud, regulatory fines, and just overall bad vendor data. Now, if you'd like over 149 uh, annual hours of training for you and your vendor team, check out the Vendor Process Training Center at training.deborahrrichardson.com. So good luck and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified next Tuesday for the next Vendor Masterfile Tip of the Week.